Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm the farm manager at Wilson's Orchard and Farm, and today we are planting our cut flower field. This is our second year of really doing a whole field of cut flowers. We found great success the first year. It looked great. Flowers produced over a long window, so uh, planting a little bit more this year and a few additional varieties. So right now it's May 11th in our region of Iowa, Iowa City, so southeast Iowa. They say about Mother's Day, you're pretty much safe from a frost. So we're a little ahead of Mother's Day right now, but the forecast looks like we're in the 50s at night, so we're not worried about a frost, so we're gonna get these puppies in right now. So if you're planting your own cut flower field, a lot of popular cut flowers are tender or and not hardy to the colder regions. So that's why you wanna wait until after the danger of frost has passed to plant. I'd like to give a shout out to Morning Glory Farms in Mount Vernon, Iowa, who uh, did our starts this year with uh, most of these varieties we started in their greenhouse in uh, March. So if you're ordering seeds or anything like that, um, the seed packet will say, uh, how many weeks before um, the last frost date to, to sow your transplant. So a lot of these are starting uh, March, a few in April. So we have, um, I don't have the number uh, off the top of my head, but we have uh, dahlias, ranunculus, some straw flower. What else do we got here? We got snapdragons, amaranth, cosmos, celosia, zinnia, and gomfrina. So almost all of those were started with the exception of our dahlias and uh, the buttercups, the uh, ranunculus. So that's what you see in this straw. So we buried these down a few inches, six inches for the dahlia, just two inches for the buttercup, mixed in a little compost and a little organic fertilizer, and then covered it with straw. So um, the straw, we did like a couple inch thick mat and make sure to fluff it up so uh, the it's not matted down and then the, the stems can't shoot through it. So we got that and then these lines are our drip irrigation line. And then all our transplants, we are planting on this black uh, weed barrier fabric. It's not really that that thin, terrible uh, landscape fabric. It's We got it out of Johnny's. It's like designed specifically for this. And this is the second year we're getting out of these. So trying not to produce too much waste. It's also our second year out of these lines. Gonna try to use them as long as we can, but this just really, really helps keep the weeds down and minimizes the amount of labor you have to to spend on weeding. The first year we did it, we we just planted into the field and didn't really have a good mulching program, and it took a lot of effort. And even with a lot of effort, we lost some areas just to getting out competed by weeds. But a lot of these flowers we selected for a long picking window and ease of growing. So uh, like zinnias, cosmos, celosia, uh, snap dragon straw flowers all these will start coming on in in the, well maybe not so much snapdragon snapdragons don't like the heat quite as much so the, the, uh, they might not last through the heat of summer but a lot of these flowers by the beginning of summer they should start their blooming and the more you cut the more they bloom back so that's we really want to maximize this little space we have so we have months and months out of the same plants producing for us so ahead of all this planting, we spread a little compost. We have two different tillers. We have a, a deep tiller that kind of really breaks up any hard pan. So this is our, well, supposed to be our ice rink in the winter. It didn't quite work out for it this year. But anyway, we did have a lot of, of movement on it, a lot of uh, foot traffic. And the year before that, we had a lot of water over the winter on it. So that really compacts the soil. So this deep tiller can kind of penetrate that, that hard pan that develops from uh, compaction uh, to loosen up the soil. And then we just have a rototiller to kind of turn that into a more fine dust that's really easy to plant into and for the, the young roots to penetrate into their new growing medium um, fairly quickly. And one thing we got, uh, well, we got it a little bit last year, but it was a big step up from how we were planting in the past. But we got a handheld transplanter that the guys are using to kind of save their knees a little bit. It's just a little chute with a handle. You jab it into the ground, kind of open up the, the chute, and it kind of drops the transplant right where it needs to be, covers it a little bit with dirt, and you, you can do it all from standing. So got to save these guys' knees when I can because I work them hard so last year we had flowers going from July early July to 
like late August. We had a really early, at least from my recollection, early uh, first frost last year. So that kind of knocked us out a little earlier than I thought, but most years hope to get into mid-October or so before a, a freeze wipes them out. Looking really wimpy and not like much now, but by July it'll be quite a beautiful bit of color here at our cut flower field. <laughs>